The Nigerian Senate has appealed to the government of the United Kingdom to pardon its member, Ike Kwaramadu, who was found guilty of organ trafficking in that country. This was a sequel to a motion moved by Chukuka Utazi of the PDP Enugu North during the plenary on Wednesday. The appeal comes as a UK court in, is set to pronounce sentence on Mr. Kwere Madu, his wife, Beatrice, and Nigerian Dr. Obin Nabeta on the 5th of May, 2023. They were found guilty of conspiracy of organ trafficking in March by the Westminster Magistrate Court, an offence that contravenes the Modern Slavery Act. Mr. Kwere Madu, a former Deputy Senate President, represents Enugu West Senatorial District in the current Senate. He was arrested in June last year for bringing a young Nigerian to the United Kingdom with a view to harvesting his organ to treat his daughter Sonia, who was suffering from a kidney disease and needed a transplant. Joining us live to discuss this is Elvis Asia and Obin Nachuku, who are both legal practitioners. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. Um, while we wait for Barista Obin, uh, Elvis, is it too late? for this call to be made by the National Assembly. There was ample time for these conversations to be had. Um, why do you think this is coming at this time? It is absolutely too late. And uh, quite frankly, uh, it's funny to hear this from the Senate, from the House of Representatives. I've seen calls from the ECOWAS Parliament. Even the former president has written a letter. These are very, with due respect to the personalities of the people involved. This is really very funny. Um, if you really want, you know, wanted to help a uh, you should have explored diplomatic channels, which should have been authorized and presided over by the president. Um, you don't forget that during the uh, proceedings uh, for his bail, Nigeria made the representation to the effect that he shouldn't be granted bail. So this is somebody, this is a Nigerian citizen um, uh, who has clearly been abandoned by the country. And so this call by the Senate, it's really just, um, at best, some form of pressure group kind of, kind of thing. It's not going to achieve anything. Mm. Why do you think, I mean, it's great that you made that point. Why do you think that Nigeria and the government, the Senate, all of those, I mean, even the diplomatic call, is making this U-turn? Because the big question is, we, Ike Karamadu was also um, fielding as a governorship candidate in his state, in Ugu State, um, just before the thick of the elections, there, there was some leeway for that to happen. But like you rightly stated, they said, you know, justice should take its course. What changed? What do you think changed right now? Because I guess that's the question that everybody's asking, including former president, Ulusha right. Basanjo, adding his voice to this. What could have prompted this? I don't think anything has changed. I think uh, the Senate, the former president, and others who are making uh, this call now are pretty much doing it because they have seen that the, 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 the appropriate authority, um, you know, under the law uh, that could have assisted the Kurmandu in terms of foreign relations has decided not to do so. Um, these are practically an attempt to make a call on behalf of a friend or a former colleague. Um, so it's not like they are actually changing uh, their position. It's clear that the government does not really want to uh, get, it doesn't want to get involved in, in assisting Kurumundu, or perhaps, you know, the country is happy uh, with what is facing right now. Of course, this is not to downplay uh, the issues involved, this is not to downplay the crime, but we have seen citizens of other countries who have been involved in even more grievous crimes, and their countries have come for, uh, fought for them. Uh, They've tried to secure their release. We have had cases in Nigeria uh, where someone, for example, uh, an instance of someone who was arrested in Saudi Arabia uh, for you know drug uh, trafficking, uh, which ordinarily would attract uh, very heavy uh, punishment. But Nigeria, you know, uh, put its out in order and, and made attempts, and you know, eventually the, the lady was uh, free. I think it was uh, Zainab Aliyu or something. Uh, so this was this is a clear case of government, uh, you know, deciding not to assist. It's a citizen who is in, uh, uh, you know, legal jeopardy in another country. And don't also forget that, you know, during the course of um, uh, uh, Kuromadu's travails, the country actually moved against him. They moved against his property. The ESCC secured orders to freeze, uh, to forfeit over 40 of his properties in Nigeria. Like I said earlier, you know, there was, the government made representations 
to the effect that it should not be granted bail. So this is really practically, uh, you know, a, a very late call. And like I said, it's not off, it's not authorized mm. even by the presidency. It's just the Senate and some few others who are trying to uh, make a call on his behalf. Uh, Vice Abhinav, thank you very much for joining us. Let me come to you. Um, with the move by the EFCC to try to um, get the former Senate um, president, um, um, his property, um, and all the other moves that the government has made, if he were a member of the sitting or the ruling party, uh, do you think we would have seen a different um, let's say, a different approach to handling this issue, or is this just the government taking a stand for justice to take its course? By stopping the okay. Uh, yeah, if I heard you clearly, you were you mentioned a confiscation of property by EFCC. Is that correct? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, um, I, it doesn't, law is principally, or law principally does not, does not respect anybody. And if a law is to be seen as a good law, or as law, it should not respect anybody. If there are infractions, or there are things that, uh, based on the um, rule of law, uh, that uh, if an EFCC finds it uh, uh, or decides that uh, some of the properties are acquired by the, I think, uh, the immediate past or a former deputy senate president. And uh, EFCC under the law has the has the power and authority to push the court for the court to uh, uh, either freeze the asset or or take it off from there. I I to me I do not see anything wrong with that. The problem that we have in this climate is that uh, our laws uh, or the operation of laws in this climate seems to respect certain individuals which ought not to uh, ought not to be so I, i'm curious if 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 we're respecters of the law why not stand by it why the sudden call by the senate why the sudden call by certain people who are in government certain politicians including our former president uh Basanjo, why the call by um, Abike Dabirewa asking for clemency. If we are, if we are saying that we want to stand for the law and we want to make sure that the law takes its course, why the sudden U-turn? Yeah, yeah I, do, I do not know whether uh, if you can hear me. I can uh, hear what? you. I can hear you. If can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I, you made mention of the uh, calls and appeals from uh, several persons, quote and unquote, high placed uh, Nigerians to UK to uh, tamper justice with mercy. To me, without sounding immodest, uh, all those appeals will amount to nothing. They will amount to nothing. In the United Kingdom, the, the law does not respect anybody. There is no law for the so-called quote-unquote uh, big man and another law for the small man. For those that went to uh, or go to UK, to United Kingdom, to uh, tamper justice with uh, mercy or for clemency, how many times have they written? How many times have they stood up for the common man in Europe? If you go to the United uh, Kingdom's uh, prisons, you will still find Nigerians. You will find some people that are from a uh, lower rung of the ladder. How many times have they have they written to or appeal to do uh, to United Kingdom to uh, for clemency for those people? Is it part of the same thing that uh, we do in Nigeria? Maybe. Some of them th think that uh, it is still the same system that is in Nigeria that is uh, pervading the United Kingdom. 
but I'm very sorry or to shun some of them. That's not what's going to happen. It doesn't matter how many letters you have written. It doesn't matter how many ideas you have made. It doesn't matter how many motions you made that is uh, at the floor of the Senate. That will not change anything. If the law, if the law, if the prescription for punishment for uh, the offense uh, committed by um, uh, uh, Dr. Guaremado is uh, five years. No, no, nobody will change it. Nothing will change it. I, I can bet you the magistrate will, that will come out that day, will come out tomorrow, as the case may be, and read out the punishment. In the United Kingdom, they respect laws. And I can tell you, if the so-called quote-unquote travail, travails of uh, uh, the former deputy president, uh, Dr. Kweremato, uh, if it has happened in Nigeria, or if it's in Nigeria, I, I, I'm sure the reverse will be the case. Mm. But I uh, quote me or uh, quote me anywhere. The appeals made by the uh, highly placed individuals or quote and unquote the highly placed individuals in Nigeria will go to no issue. It will not in any way placate or make United Kingdom to change their laws. Okay. What may will happen at the end of the day is that if the prescription is five years, if it's ten years, and no option of five, the only time the clemency or whatever will come to play is if the offense has, there are latitudes for, for the uh, for magistrate to exercise discretion. If there are no latitudes, for uh, uh, exercise of uh, discretion. Nothing okay. will come out of it, and I can bet you that's the way it will be. Okay. Let me come back to you. Um, let's look at um, this issue, Elvis. Um, there are those who have said that there is um, some, you know, politics to this. I mean, for example, Ike Goremadu himself had told the court that he was being scammed um, during pre uh, preliminary hearing uh, of this case. But there are those who have posited that uh, they suspect foul play and deep-seated politics of rancor uh, from the get-go, especially because he was trying to run for a particular office at the time. What's your thoughts on this? Well, I mean, you, you cannot rule out the, the possibility of politics in the, in the, in the travails that Ike Kuramadu is currently facing. Uh, don't forget that before his arrest, he was practically a symbol of opposition in, in, in the country. Um, you know, the PDP opposition to the present administration as a, as a, as a 2022, uh, Kuyamundu was practically the head of, of, of the group, uh, you know, both at the Senate and in, in public, for, in public uh, uh, forums. So essentially, uh, you cannot rule out politics. But again, you also played, played into their hands. You know, I mean, you know, what, uh, like my colleague earlier said, uh, the law does not respect, you know, personalities, particularly, you know, in other countries of the world, like in the UK. Uh, the offense of, of trafficking, uh, uh, you know, under the Modern Slavery Act of 2015 is a very serious offense, and they, they take it very seriously. And the UK has been looking for a scapegoat to showcase uh, the dynamics of that legislation. And they found it in uh, Kurimandu. And unfortunately, like I said, you know, there was no support. There was no diplomatic support uh, for Kurimandu. And so he couldn't uh, get off the hook, uh, particularly b before uh, the charges were preferred. So you cannot rule out politics. But like I said, you, you, you also, as a politician, you have to be careful not to, uh, uh, you know, give an advantage to those who are seeking to pull you down mm. to do so. And on this particular occasion, uh, Mr. Kurumandu has given uh, his opponent uh, the gun uh, with which to shoot him down. Interesting. Uh, let me come back to you, Barista Abina. Now that the situation has come to where it has come to, does this, if, if of course, the sentencing is just around the corner, and uh, like you have said and you have strongly stated, that all these pleas might just fall on deaf ears because the United Kingdom is not Nigeria. And on one way or the other, you're also um, saying that you do not trust the justice system in this country because its eyes are totally open and you can see the rich, the poor, the high and the mighty. Um, is this going to one way or the other send a message of sorts, a strong message to those who you would regard as the high and mighty 
um, in their dealings outside the borders of this country. Okay, I, I, I think your, your voice is a bit faint, but uh, uh, the few things I grasped, I, I think uh, you uh, your mentioned uh, about uh, a kind of a comparison of the justice system in Nigeria. Well, uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say it again. Maybe you can hear me better now. What I'm saying is that okay. you, you had said right. that our justice system... Um, is not anything close to what you have in the United Kingdom. You had said that if the roles were reversed, um, Nigeria would one way or the other give the Senate, former Senate president a slap on the wrist. And so I'm asking, um, what would people like him, um, what message would this send to people like him in terms of their dealings outside the shores of this country? Okay. The, it, it, it is very, very clear. I, I, I think... Uh, Without sounding immodest and derogatory to the judicial system in Nigeria, yes, we have made some progress or some uh, levels of uh, progress in certain some areas. Yes, but there are still areas that uh, we are that uh, uh, the judicial system in Nigeria are still uh, is still lacking behind. There are still no doubt about that, and there is no comparison between the between the two uh, again looking at uh, uh, one of the areas is that uh, the quick response or the uh, the if you look at the duration of this trial you will see that uh, obviously you can compare that with the Nigerian judicial system if we still if that trial took place in Nigeria that would have been I'm sure by now would have still been uh, still at the preliminary stages or so, uh, but that that cannot uh, be compared. Then another thing uh, that uh, you mentioned is that, uh, uh, again, if Nigerians, well, we must understand that, we must understand understand that the two judicial systems are not, are not safe. In the United Kingdom, like I said, the, there is operation of the law. There is a rule of law. The rule of law takes place. It's not the rule of might. But in Nigeria, we have a somewhat, uh, uh, what I would refer to, uh, a kind of a pseudo, a pseudo rule of law, where a uh, rule of law takes happens only when uh, the interests of, uh, quote and unquote, the powers that be wants it. Mm -hmm. Where uh, any time the powers that be is not interested in that, you will, you will find the rule of law in abeyance. That's what we have here. And okay. I think there are one big lesson or lessons or lessons that Nigerians must learn from this is that uh, outside Nigeria, particularly in the West, it's not business as usual. There is no way from the beginning Anybody with a legal mind will know that a Puerto will be convicted because you cannot have somebody who is not a, a relative. No, uh, you share no blood relationship. Uh, is not a friend. He is not in any way related with the family for which a healthy adult or young person will want to donate a kidney. If you look at it from the intricacies, you will know. Obviously, that will get to where we are. Okay. So All right. The yeah. lesson is that it's not the same thing. And again, it's high time in Nigeria will begin to allow allow for complete rule of law. This thing, okay. you don't need rocket science to do what the United Kingdom has done. And okay. for uh, people that are saying uh, there is uh, is politically motivated, I think that's uh, uh, to say the least. That uh, that's not true. It's not true well, this, that I got uh, uh, Dr. Kweremado to entangle himself in, in what has happened. It has no political connotation. That's okay. what they do in Nigeria. Once any so-called big person gets involved or is at the wrong side of the law, he cites and promotes political... All right, uh, All right uh, by stopping that. Because of time, we have to go. Unfortunately, I, I was hoping that we would be able to... Uh, get Elvis in on the conversation, but we're out of time. I want to say thank you. Elvis Astia is a legal practitioner, so is Obin Nachiku. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you.
Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you. And that's it on the show thank tonight. You. We want to thank you all for being part of the conversation. Uh, we will be back tomorrow on Friday with more politics stories within and outside Nigeria. I'm Mary Anna Kuhn. Have a good evening.